Hello everyone, I am here with one final build for Diablo 2 Resurrected. It will be the final build because it's the only other one that I can see of that fits my playstyle, and because I don't plan to spend a lot of time on Diablo. I'm happy to see an old gym return, but um, it's only going to be a stopgap for me. I plan to move on to Battlefield 2042 or another game um, after a while. By then, I'll hang this up and probably forget about it, honestly. Well, at least a good chunk of it. Yeah, okay. Um, to kind of help you understand this build, let me go and go through some things first. Starting with the difference between this build and my Amazon build that I just recently posted. My Amazon build was meant to be versatile in that it's able to use melee as well as ranged. In addition, it's a quasi-farmer. I can't remember if I mentioned in the prior recording, so if I didn't, here we go. The way it worked with the old Diablo is people would normally have one character for farming and one character for doing other things. Usually that farming character was a sorceress because it has good clear times and can run on very cheap equipment. When people are doing that particular type of character, their target goal is 250% magic find. My Amazon bill doesn't quite reach 250%, uh, but it gets pretty close to 210, assuming that you get good rolls and assuming that you gear things in a certain order. This Paladin build, on the other hand, is not going to be for farming. It's a combat dedicated build, and that is the only thing that is going to be featured in this build. I think that this honestly could be a better PvP build um, than my Amazon, because uh, you could add guided arrows to my Amazon build so that you can blend a super cheesy strategy with the spear, but I think ultimately this build will do far more damage uh, than my Amazon build. While we are talking about other builds, I will go ahead and compare this to a druid. A druid with werewolf can do an incredible amount of damage, but I don't think that it's going to be as nearly as much as the paladin, for a couple of reasons. One is the way the equipment is going to be set up in those particular builds, and uh, two is that the Paladin, at least in this particular setup in comparison to another setup, uh, would be able to sustain itself for far longer than the Druid can, even with all that percent life. It's just because of how much damage reduction this build does have and uh, a couple other things. You'll see why very shortly. Okay, with that out of the way... Um, I think I should cover some mechanics that you will likely see with this build, just so you're aware of um, what to expect. When it comes to the Hell difficulty, it reduces the amount of mana and lifesteal that you are capable of, as well as some other things. It lowers your resists and um, some other stuff. That means that unless you're hardcore stacking, Life and Mana Leech, it's not going to have much of an effect in Hell. There is an alternative, and that's Damage to Mana. Damage to Mana, you'll see on some Rune Wards, items, or otherwise. This tripped a lot of people when it was new, and in the event that it will do the same to new people, I want to go ahead and let you know that Damage to Mana does not mean Damage Absorb. All it says or all it means is that the damage that you would have normally received does still go to your health um, after all the mitigations from um, you know, damage reduction, elemental resist, or whatever. But in addition to going to the health, it goes to the mana as well. So yes, it does depend on how much damage you're receiving. Um, that does factor into how much mana you're getting, plus the percent of the mana gained or the percentage of mana uh, from damage. You will notice that in this build, and that's why I want to cover it. Uh, last mechanic I want to cover is Replenish Life. Replenish Life is completely different from Regenerate Mana. 
Regenerate mana is based on the percent given by the item and based on the total mana pool. Replenish life is completely different from that. Replenish life, unlike replenish mana, is not dependent on how much health you have. It's actually dependent on the number provided. So if you see replenish life plus 6, then that means 6 health regen. There's nothing complicated to replenish life in comparison to replenish mana. So yes, you will also see replenish life on this build. It's not going to be a main focus of it, but you will notice it, and I just want you to be aware that that's what it does. Okay, with that out of the way, I can go ahead and start getting into um, the attributes. Well, sort of. Okay, actually, I just realized I forgot something. Um, I have noticed that the Affects Your Life wiki is different from the Ariat Summit website, which is the one of the websites you'll see linked in this recording as well as the prior recording. Given that the numbers are different between the two websites, uh, it's really hard for me to tell which numbers are correct. So unlike my Amazon build, this build is actually going to have some uncertainties. It's not going to be too much where it's detrimental, but it's certainly going to be one of those things you have to pay attention to. Uh, unfortunately, there's just not really a whole lot I can do about that. Uh, because the full release of Diablo hasn't happened yet, I'm not able to just go in-game and check myself. With that out of the way, now I can talk about skills and attributes. Okay, for attributes, assuming that the numbers are correct, um, I will be shooting for a polearm. Let me go and tap over. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to be shooting for the Great Poleaxe, which is the one you see right there. There's a very good reason that I'm choosing that over the uh, Giant Thresher. The Giant Thresher requires a crap ton of strength and dexterity. It's actually unrealistic for a melee weapon, so I'm going to completely ignore that. The Great Poleaxe not only does more damage, but it's a little bit more of a realistic approach to the build because you'll notice it only takes 179 strength and 99 dexterity. That said, that is where your uh, goal is going to be, is 179 strength and 99 dexterity. The Paladin starts with... Uh, let me pull up my notes. The Paladin starts with 20 dexterity, 25 vitality, and 25 strength. So all you have to do is just make sure you build up to that uh, dexterity and strength level and then put the rest into vitality. Uh, you do want to shoot for 200 vitality, which would honestly take longer than level 74, but the build does account for the lower vitality score through the uh, equipment, and I will certainly go over that as well. Um, but yes, you're going to be shooting for higher vitality as you level. But just be aware that your target goal is that polearm, and you will see why very shortly. Moving on to skills. Okay, so like I've said before uh, with the last recording, you want to diversify your build as much as possible. If you focus on one thing, you're going to have a very, very rough time because um, if you run something that's immune, then yeah, it's you just have to have something to switch over to so you can compensate for that. Uh, not only that, it does help to have an AoE mixed in. Given that this is a Vengeance build, that means that, well, I should say Vengeance focus build, that means that you're going to be primarily focused on melee. There's not going to be a plus cast speed, which is what you would normally want if you're running a hammered in. But because we're running attack speed, it means that hammers are out. The next best thing that you can do for yourself in terms of not only switching to a different damage type, um, but also dealing with groups is going to be zeal. So zeal is going to be the secondary, but vengeance is going to be the focus. That said, you're going to be looking for uh, a couple of skills here. You'll notice Vengeance is right here on the tree, and it's right below Zeal, so you'll be able to max out Zeal and Vengeance pretty easily because they're connecting to each other. I would also recommend in the combat tree that you get one point into Charge. Charge will just help you close the gap with your enemy, so you don't have to worry too much about um, running up to them. So that's going to involve two points right there. Uh, essentially, this is going to involve one point because you have to get sacrifice in order to get to Zeal and Vengeance. And then those two are going to be 20. So the only thing in your combat tree 
that's going to be 20, which is the maxed out, is going to be Zeal and Vengeance. Vengeance uh, does synergize with the defensive auras listed right here, which is resist fire, resist cold, and resist lightning. It does synergize with salvation as well, but not as much as these three. In order to bump up the damage from uh, Vengeance, you're going to spend into these three auras, which happens to be able to help you with um, leveling as well. Out of these three auras, you're going to want to focus on uh, resist lightning because you're going to be having a focus of lightning damage on this build. I will go over that with the equipment in a little bit, uh, but you want to do that. The other thing that you need to focus on is fanaticism. Fanaticism is plus damage, plus attack speed, and a couple other things. Um, so this is really a great aura, and I'm happy to see the changes they made to that aura with Resurrected. Um, so you're going to need to also spend one point into these three skills to make sure you get down to fanaticism. From there, you're going to want to max out fanaticism. This is going to be your primary aura, and you'll see why once we get to the equipment as well. But yeah, so put a priority over here. Um, I wouldn't try to max these out if you can, but if you can't, don't worry about it. Uh, with whatever points you have left over after you've done all the things I just listed, um, if there's any points left over, you can spend them into Salvation, but for the most part, I would ignore Salvation because its synergy is less than what these are. These are 10% more damage to Vengeance, and this is only worth 2% per point. As you can see, these are 8% more damage per point to the specific element, whereas this is only 2% to all of them. So this does not do as much as these three, unfortunately. And that's where your skill distribution is going to be. Now I should go into the equipment so you can kind of understand where this is going. There's a reason for... I'll go and start with the rune ward, um, because there's it, it ties into my explanation of the focus on the polearm and the skilled um, stuff. So I'm looking to make an affinity build out of this. Now I know that I said that you should be focused on shields if you're playing a paladin, but I'm willing to make an exception because this build is very tanky. And it shouldn't be a, too much of a factor without the shield. But yeah, so you're going to be going Infinity um, so that you can get the level 12 Conviction Aura while it's equipped. That makes it possible to do two auras at once, Fanaticism and Conviction. It's not going to be as strong as if you were to do a t level 20 Conviction yourself, but it is still a 12 Conviction, which is still more than half of the enemy's defense and elemental resistances, which will allow you to hit them like a freight train. Uh, when using Vengeance. In addition to that, you're getting the uh, minus to enemy lightning resistance, chance of crushing blow, uh, plus to your vitality based on character level, and a level 21 Cyclone Armor. Cyclone Armor will stop elemental damage. Now, uh, repairing an item that's using charges is going to be very expensive. But if you run into a situation where you absolutely need to use Cyclone Armor, you have 30 charges, and if you have enough gold to feed it, by all means do it. So yes, there's a very good reason that I'm focused on that Halberd and um, using Fanaticism with all the uh, Vengeance stuff. While we're on Rune Words, let me go and talk about the other change. Let's see, that would be Chest Armor. Right. So on my Amazon build, I did um, the uh, chains thing. Where's that thing? Yeah, chains of honor. I did chains of honor in the prior build, which is plus 65 to all uh, resistances. It's very high. Um, but on this build, I'm going to be switching over to fortitude. That's because fortitude gives me plus life, maximum lightning resistance. And yes, the all resistances is lower than chains of honor but it's still all resistances, and I can compensate for it elsewhere. I'll show you in a bit. Um, it's still damage reduction. Um, it has a higher defense rating than Chains of Honor and a higher damage rating, which is going to be awesome because I'm looking to drop the target as quickly as possible. While I can certainly tank, I don't want to be in the fight for any longer than I have to, so three times damage is certainly welcomed in addition to everything else. Oh, and there's that Replenish Life, and, um, oh no, it's just Replenish Life, yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's that Replenish Life I was talking about. It is plus six on uh, Fortitude. It's not going to matter much by the time that you get to Fortitude, because 
uh, you'll probably have around 3,000 HP, maybe 2,500, and that's going to take a long time to regen on on uh, Replenish Life plus six. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But yeah, that's going to be your chest piece. You're going to focus on using Fortitude. Now, unlike my Amazon build, um, you do have the option to use other chest pieces because my Amazon build doesn't have the strength to use really anything higher than a Great Hauberk or Archon Plate. But because this build does have a ton of strength, it's possible to use uh, pretty much any of these all the way up to Kraken Shell. Kraken Shell is where you will reach the limit of your strength. Um, but other than that, you have all of this to access. Um, should it be hard to get Archon Plate or um, some of the others, you certainly have that flexibility. So pick any one of these when crafting uh, Fortitude. Okay, that's your chest armor. Let me go over to the Helms discussion. Now, uh, the other thing that we have to discuss when it comes to Rune Wards is the helmet, because this build can um, use a Dream Crafted Helmet, but I'm electing not to, and I'm going to go ahead and go through that. With Dream, it does provide a level 16 Holy Shock, which does add to my area effect, but the problem is it's lightning damage, meaning all it takes is one lightning immune to make this completely worthless. In addition, notice the other stuff that it has on it. Uh, it's defense, vitality, maximum life, all resistances, and magic find. So while those are certainly good, the defense, uh, faster hit recovery, and the life, it's just not going to be as good as um, Crown of Ages. Crown of Ages is going to give you a ton of defense, plus one to all skills, which isn't a really big deal. Um, damage reduction, which is extremely hard to come by. Um, all resistances, faster hit recovery, and two sockets. Because um, Crown of Ages can have up to two sockets, that means that you can certainly put runes in there if you want to. And let me go and tab over for that. So uh, one of the things that you can put in there um, is bear runes. If you were to put two bear runes in there, you would increase your damage reduction by an additional 16%. You could, if you have a very good roll, hit 30% damage reduction between Crown of Ages and Verdungo's Hardy Cord. And then you can stack another 16 on top of that, making 46%. 46% would put you just 4% below the maximum um, cap of damage reduction. So yes, you would be able to reach a higher damage reduction through Crown of Ages than the other one. The plus life is nice because we are running a lot of plus life, but I'm able to compensate for that through Infinity and Fortitude. So I'm not too concerned about losing life on the helmet. So yes, uh, there's a very good reason for wanting to do Crown of Ages. Okay, there's that. Uh, let me see. Oh, here, I guess I can just real quickly pull up. Yeah, there's Verdungo's Heavy Hardy Cord. It's the same as my Amazon build. Um, you can see that it is Vitality and Damage Reduction. 15% of max roll, so... Okay, moving on. When it comes to the gloves, you have a couple of options here. Um, as I mentioned with the mechanics, you do get reduced uh, mana and lifesteal. So Soul Drainer actually might not be a good response um, to Hell difficulty, at which point you would be looking at Laying of Hands or Lava Gout in that situation. The difference between these two is going to be in the Fire Resistance and the fact that Lava Gout has... Um, half freeze duration, but you will be running Raven Frost, so I don't really see a point in worrying about that half freeze duration. It really is just down to the um, fire resistance and attack speed. At which case, this is 50% fire resistance by itself, and this is only 24%. So, laying of hands certainly does a lot more for this build um, if you're looking for an attack speed glove when comparing it to Lava Gout. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about boots now. So for boots, um, there's really only two good options here. That's going to be Water Walk 
and Immortal King's Pillar. Immortal King's Pillar by itself is defense, faster run walk, attack rating, which is flat attack rating, and life. Water walk is going to be a little bit different in that it gives plus percent maximum fire resistance, heal stamina, um, bigger life pool, um, and I think the difference is max stamina as well. Let me just double check that. Yeah. So Water Walk does give you plus maximum stamina in addition to heal stamina and maximum fire resistance. It's not going to have as much flat uh, attack rating because this is only plus 15 to dexterity right here. And actually, if you want to, another thing too you can do with Water Walk is because it will be a core of this build, um, more than likely, I guess you could use Moral King, but if you are to make this the core, it would be plus 15 to dexterity, which would allow you to spend less on dexterity. So you can spend more on Vitality. You can use this to wield the, the Halberd if you absolutely have to. So there's certainly that. Okay, let me talk about Amulets. For Amulets, I'm going to recommend uh, Metal Grid. Metal Grid is going to give you plus um, all resistances, flat defense, and flat attack rating. I really don't care about Iron Golem and Iron Maiden. I really don't. Um, it's just going to be there. I'm really more concerned with those three stats right there. Um, between Fortitude, Crown of Ages, and this, you should have enough all resistances to get well past the negative effects of the Hell difficulty. And then some. I guess you could also consider um, Nakazen Relic for more maximum fire resistance. Between that and Water Walk, you would have plus 10% to max. Um, plus faster hit recovery. Uh, it's certainly viable for the build. Uh, another one you could consider is the Mahem Okurio. That's not going to have um, flat attack rating, and it's going to have less all resistances. Um, but it is going to have, uh, I guess it does have plus uh, enhanced percent defense, but yeah, it's probably going to be less than Metal Grid. So. I don't think that this would be really a great option. I guess you could also consider Saracen's Chance, which is some life and uh, all resistances. But this build already has a lot of life, so I don't know. I guess you. I guess out of the options for alternatives to Metal Grid, I would say probably Saracen's Chance is the best, as that's going to have um, higher all resist and higher life. Because uh, the Paladin is 3 vitality per point, or I'm sorry, 3 health per point of vitality. So 12 times 3 versus 12 times, or uh, 10 times 3 is going to be a, a small difference uh, in that particular case. Um, but yeah, I guess you could also do that to lower the uh, amount of points you have to spend into your stats as well, just like what you would do with Water Walk. I guess it's really up to you, but those are your options right there. Uh, let me see here. Did I miss anything? Uh, oh, yeah. I guess I can show this real quickly. So you can see that right here. This is what we were referring to earlier with the auras. There's their synergies, and there's that. Um, oh, let me talk about plus skills. Okay, so there's a reason you're not finding plus skills on these items, and you're finding plus skills on my Amazon. It's because with this particular build, all plus skills is doing is just adding more damage. While plus damage is nice, this build is already doing a ton of it, so I'm not particularly concerned about having plus to all skills. But on the Amazon build, that's a completely different story because it's not only doing damage, but it's upping all those passives like Critical Strike, um, my passive for attack rating, uh, my arrow penetration ability, it's also affecting the evasions and things like that. So plus all skills means a lot more to the Amazon build than it does this Paladin build. In this particular case, I'm only concerned with being able to face tank, uh, stay alive, and dish damage. Those are the only things I'm concerned with. But yes, there's the um, build in its entirety. Um, I will put the short uh, notes in the description, just like I did with the Amazon build. But for now, that's all I have.
Thanks for listening.